we're going to be talking about the spanning tree protocol and what it does. 8021D version, 8021W version, also known as rapid spanning tree. Then we'll also be talking about a couple of other features, ether channel and port fast. I'm going to bring up this slide that I did in Visio, and it basically shows two switches, Palestra 1 and Palestra 2, with redundant links. We've got redundant links between FA01 on each switch as well as FA02 on each switch. Why would we want redundant links? Well, we want redundant links, so if PC1 and PC2 need to communicate and link 1 goes down, we have another way for them to communicate. But there is a problem with redundant links between switches. Switches are not made to choose paths between connections, and they really open up the possibility for a broadcast storm when you have redundant links between switches. So spanning tree is very important. Take a look at a common scenario that happens when there is redundant links between switches, but spanning tree is not operating. Let's say PC1 sends a broadcast message out. Now a broadcast message is a message that's sent to everybody. So it hits the port on the switch. And what does a switch do? A switch forwards broadcast messages out all ports. So it would go out FA01 and FA02. Now the broadcast message that comes in on FA01 over here will get forwarded out FA02 over here as well as the port that the computer's plugged on. And then FA02, this, the packet that comes in here, will get forwarded out FA01 as well as the port that the PC's plugged into. And what happens is you get this broadcast storm cruising around your network. So all this broadcast traffic just starts looping around your network. What does that do to your network? It shuts your network down. So we need spanning tree because what spanning tree is going to do is it will block one of these ports. I've magically wiped my slide clean and let's take a look at what happens if we block a port. Spanning tree is going to go in and automatically shut a port down based on certain criteria. With this port FA01 shut down and PC1 sends a broadcast message out, it's not going to go out of this interface because this port is shut down. It'll go out here, hit PC2, and it doesn't end up looping around creating this broadcast storm. So it saves us. Let's take a look at how Spanning Tree figures out what port it's going to block. I'm going to snap my fingers and clear the slide real quick. And let's go in and figure out how Spanning Tree is going to block a port. First, it starts off with the switches sending what are called B, P, D, use back and forth bridging protocol data units they send these BPDUs back and forth every two seconds the BPDUs are made up of two things mainly I mean there are some other things in there but the MAC address and what's called a priority number the MAC address of the switch, every switch has its own base MAC address. I'm just going to use four characters here. So let's say the MAC address of Palestra 1 is all 1's. MAC address of Palestra 2 is all 2's. And the priority number, which can be changed, but by default is 32768. What they're doing is they're comparing their BPDUs. And based on the comparison, one of these switches will be elected the root bridge. And what it comes down to is the lower MAC address or base MAC address of the switch, if the priority numbers match, that device will become the root bridge. So based on this, priorities number match, and this is default priority number by the way of 32768 which can be manipulated but by default the numbers match the MAC address of the switch is what's going to determine who gets to be the root so Palestra 1 becomes the root the nice thing about the root 
is all ports forward. With all ports forwarding on the route, that means FA01 and FA02 are going to get the green lights. These will not be shut down. So the first criteria is done at this point, and the first thing is elect the root bridge or root switch. So that's the first thing that's done. And the BPD used with MAC addresses, all that stuff, does that. The second thing that needs to be done for each non-root bridge, which would be Palestra 2, elect one root port, meaning one port that's the fastest path back to the root bridge, and that port's going to get a green light. In this situation where both ports are equal, what will happen is, and this is a little bit of an assumption on my part, I believe the way they figured out spanning tree to do this when both links are equal speeds, the lower port number would become the root port when both links are equal speeds. So since FA01 and FA02 have equal costs back to the root bridge, FA01, since it is a lower port number, gets the green light. It would be really easy for spanning tree, let's say if this were a 100 megabit port and this were a 10 megabit port. Spanning tree actually has costs associated with the speeds of links. So 100 megabit would have a lower cost than the 10 meg port, and this again, FA01, would get the green light. That's the second criteria out of the way. The third criteria is for each segment, and I'm talking about the section of cable here, each segment, there is one designated port. So it's going to an elect a designated port. Now the designated port on each segment is the port that is closest to the root bridge. So if you're this cable segment right here between Palestra 1 and Palestra 2, your root port, or designated port, I'm sorry, would be the port that is actually on Palestra 1, which is the root. That already has a green light. So it kind of is a redundancy as far as green lighting that port. And for this segment up here, FA01 on Palestra 1 would be the designated port as well. The three criteria have been looked at. The root bridge, all ports forward, FA01, FA02 on. For each non-root bridge, one root port, which is FA01 on Palestra 2. And then for each segment, there's one designated port. So the designated ports for the top segment are FA01 on Palestra 1, bottom segment FA02 on Palestra 2. All ports or all criteria have been looked at. Now we just have to find the port that didn't match any of these criteria. The port that didn't match any of the criteria is port FA02 on Palestra 2. So that port gets shut down. And what will happen once all this has been figured out, the only device that's going to be sending out BPDUs is the root. And what will happen is Palestra 2 will be receiving those BPDUs on FA01. So again, this guy right here is the port that Palestra 2 is going to be receiving the BPDUs on. If for some reason this link goes down, somebody unplugs it or whatever happens, a rat might chew through the cabling up in the ceiling if it does go up in the ceiling, whatever. Whatever the case, this port goes down, Palestra 2 is not receiving BPDUs anymore from the root. He'll open up and automatically start listening on FA02 and go through transitioning this port from blocking to listening and then forwarding. Now, if this link comes back up, spanning tree would automatically reconfigure. So for a quick recap on this, 8021D spanning tree goes in and it finds a port to block. BPDUs, bridging protocol data units, are sent out every 20 seconds. If the non-root switch doesn't hear from the root, 
After 20 seconds, it'll automatically start listening on any blocked ports. The amount of time it takes for a change in the network or a link to go down before all the ports or appropriate ports are back up and listening again is 50 seconds. That's the default convergence time. It goes in and elects a root bridge. All ports on the root bridge forward. After that, each non-root bridge has one root port that port would be in the forwarding state and for each segment it elects one designated port and that port would be in the forwarding state now there are four spanning tree states that the switch goes through blocking state starts off in the blocking state to ensure that there will not be any loops taking place then it goes into the listening state where it's listening for these BPDUs going on every two seconds. It's getting that BPDU information. After the listening, it'll go into the learning state. In the learning state, it can actually populate its table, but it will not forward any information. So it populates the table, does not forward. Once it's in the forwarding state, it goes ahead and operates normally. Let's look at 8021W. The 8021W, also known as Rapid Spanning Tree, has a very similar operation to Spanning Tree Protocol 8021D version. Alexa root bridge, all that, same way. But the big thing is the convergence time. 10 second average convergence time can be as little as 1 or 2 seconds, which is much faster than the default 50 second convergence time for regular Spanning Tree. How it does it is the states, there are only three states, discarding, which is like the blocking state, learning, and forwarding state for rapid spanning tree. Discarding and forwarding are the uh, stable states. Learning would be a transitory state. How it does it is the improvements are the max age, max age of the BPDU for spanning tree is 20 seconds. Rapid spanning tree goes with a max age of 6 seconds. There is no listening state, so the transition is much faster. And the big thing here is when, it, when a link goes down, the switch will actively seek out the new topology. In spanning tree, once the root has been found, so let's say this is the root switch, and here is the non-root, and there's redundant links here. I love my artwork. In this situation, in regular spanning tree, if this link goes down, this guy just waits. He'll start listening and start going through his transitory states, start listening for BPDUs on this port. In rapid span tree, here's the root again, if the link goes down, instead of just waiting, he's going to go out and start inquiring. So he actively seeks out the new topology. And with the shorter max age, removal of the listening state, and actively seeking out the new topology information, you've got a 10 second convergence versus a 50 second convergence with regular spanning tree. So, much better. So, to see spanning tree in action, I can go over to my simulator, look at the network map real quick. Palestra 1 connects to Palestra 2. It doesn't show it here, but there's redundant links I've configured. FA01 to 01, FA02 to 02 between the two switches. So, one of those ports needs to be blocked. If I'm on Palestra 1 and I type in the command show spanning tree, type that in, show spanning tree, hit enter, shows me the priority number as well as the address. And it shows me my actual bridge ID. Notice it matches the bridge ID and the priority number. That's what gets sent out in the BPDU. Now what it shows me down here are my ports that are participating in this. Port 19 is in the forwarding state. Um, port 19, I'm sorry, the cost is 19 for the interface. Port FA01 is in the forwarding state. Port FA02 is in the blocking state. What that means is Palestra 1 is not the root bridge. Palestra 2 was elected the root because it had a lower base MAC address. So Palestra 1 had to end up blocking a port. And I can view this information with the show spanning tree. There's a couple of other show commands that are very helpful. Bring those up. 
show spanning tree again I could do an interface option with that this is optional show spanning tree VLAN what that does is a VLAN allows me to have multiple broadcast domains on one switch each broadcast domain would have to have its own version of spanning tree so to check to make sure spanning tree is running on every broadcast domain I'd specify the VLAN that I wanted to view it for debug spanning tree that allows me to actually see the spanning tree BPDUs all that information running in real time and that'll tell me that it's up and running as well as the information that's getting passed back and forth between the switches debugging can be very helpful for troubleshooting couple additional things that we can do for our environment to make it more efficient one of them is configuring ether channel let me bring up my slide and what ether channel does instead of having these redundant links act separately and having to block a port I can have them work together and I can group the link between FA01 on both switches and the link between FA02 on both switches I can group them together to act as one link and what that would do is it would eliminate the need to block one of these ports as well as if one port did shut down for some reason I wouldn't have to go through any convergence or anything because the other link would still be up and running and it would might slow down a little bit but I'd still have this link up and running up here and it would carry all the traffic that both lines carried before so ether channel allows me to group these two links together to act as one let's take a look at how I would configure that I set the configuration up in notepad and what I would do is on palestra 1 I do the same thing on palestra 2 is I'd go in and I'd go to interface FA01 and I'd say channel group 1 and depending on the number I put here would be determined would determine what group or what other interfaces I grouped it with so I'd have multiple groups if I had multiple different redundant links go channel group 1 mode on turn it on then I go to interface FA02 and I have to specify the same channel group to make FA, the link on FA02 and the link on FA01 act together I go channel group 1 mode on and I turn it on there's one other additional feature that's called port fast let's go take a look at what port fast will do for us let me bring my slide back up and port fast what that does is this port right here might be port FA03 this port right here there is a PC connected to that port that is not an uplink port with port fast what I can do is when I plug a device into this particular port I can have that port turn on immediately if I plug something into FA01 it's gonna take a moment for this link to come up because it wants to make sure that by turning this interface on it's not going to introduce a loop into the switching environment and thus introduce broadcast storms and all those problems this port is not used for uplinking so if I know certain interfaces are not going to be used for an uplink I can use the port fast command and what I'll do is whenever I plug something right into it it's not going to worry about spanning tree it's just going to automatically turn on let me show you how to configure that I'm going to bring up the simulator and let's say we've got something plugged into FA03 here so I'll enter into Palestra 1 I'm going to go to the interface FA0 slash 3 and turn on port fast so when we plug something into it it immediately comes on I have to use the spanning tree sub interface command and I just type port fast that'll go ahead and make this port an access port access port I mean a port that is not used as uplink and it turns it on the port fast turns that on and says hey whenever something plugs in here immediately go green don't worry about worrying about uh, any loops or anything like that just go ahead and turn the port on so again the two additional features are ether channel which groups the links together as one link and port fast which allows us to tell our ports to just automatically go to the forwarding state we have talked about 8021D version of spanning tree 8021W which again gives us faster convergence ether channel and port fast